What is going on, everybody? DJ Mines here. Okay, so look, we all know if you're a crypto miner, as I am, that the gaming channels love to poke fun. They like to mislead their audience a lot, talking about how bad crypto mining is and how these GPUs are used and harmed. And I would actually totally disagree with that. However, today we are going to be reacting to Linus Tech Tips, and we're going to find out, is he full of it or is he giving crypto miners a fair chance? Yes, necessarily, just because it's used doesn't mean it was mined on, but I think in most gaming situations, at least from what I have seen, they're basically talking about crypto miners. So again, this is from Linus Tech Tips, and it is titled, I ran 1500 tests to prove the media is wrong about used GPUs. I'll put a link in the description below. Make sure to also support the original content. Here we go. New GPUs are expensive. Ooh, ah, oh, my money <laughs> bone. But the media says that buying a secondhand GPU is risky. Ooh, it's a bad idea. Well, as a ruthless deal hunter, he look young. I disagree. And to prove my point, I bought 19 used GPUs to run through our gauntlet of over 1,500 tests. 19 GPUs, 1,500 tests. This should be some good results. I can already feel it. And by the way, this editing is top notch. My goodness. Settling this argument once and for all. Every one of these GPUs was sourced anonymously from 17 different sellers on eBay. And we looked at everything from clock speeds to performance to thermals. We did run into some pitfalls, Ooh. but with our help, there's no reason for you to be afraid. So when the time comes to adopt your rescue GPU, you should be able to recognize and maybe even overcome any past abuse. And with the money that you save buying used, maybe you can check out something from our sponsor. Pulseway, Pulseway is a mo Oh, that was a pretty good switch there. I need to, I need to start doing that a little bit, huh? I'll, I'll support Mobile it. First, We're going to support the ad. Management tool built with MSPs and IT teams in mind. To learn more about how you can see and control your network from anywhere, check out the link in the video description. I'll do that for you, buddy. When we bought these cards last year, we took a shotgun approach, trying to get a mixture of different brands at a variety of price points. The only requirement was that at some point, they had to have been desirable for mining and hard to find for gamers. So. I think this is really excellent that they said it had to be desirable for mining and obviously the gamers as well. They're going to play on it. That's really good criteria. Looks like they've done a lot of research. We'll see what we got here. Asrock Phantom Gaming. Okay, so this is just the company, Sapphire. I have, I think, two of those. So that's pretty cool. Well, we ended up with some Radeon 5700 series cards. These were super power efficient and lower demand compared to the NVIDIA competition, making them some of the most profitable cards for mining. On the green side of things, 3060s were popular thanks to their high VRAM to price ratio and not to mention the failure of NVIDIA's foolish attempt to limit hash rates. I would say the 3060 wasn't that desirable to be honest with you. Not that it really matters as far as the test or the information he's gonna tell us. I'd say more of the 3060 Ti was at the beginning of the crypto boom in 2021, maybe even the mid, but more people were really started to get involved in the 3070 3060s like uh yeah i mean it's super budget it's it's okay i, I wouldn't say 3060 was really that great to be honest but it's fine it's for the video and as for 3070s and 3080s okay well, they were just plain powerful okay now, all right i take it back i'm sorry step one is to talk to the seller as much as people like to paint crypto miners as evil monsters and some of them are, the majority of used GPU sellers are just regular people who saw a way to make some extra cash and would happily tell you about the card's history. I really appreciate Linus saying it, especially the way he did. There's gonna be so much of his audience there are so many people from his audience that are going to be angry, man. They they think we're not gamers. I've been playing games since I was like in sixth grade, man. Playing Brood War, playing Diablo 2, and I've never quit. I've Consoles, everything. Like, we're just like you guys. And so it's kind of crazy that division they like to create. So I think that was really cool that he said, you know, just regular ass people, just like all you. We just happen to like making money with our GPUs instead of just letting them sit there and, you know, wait for us to play on them. Step two, then, is to inspect the product for obvious issues. Physical damage, wear and tear, scratches, or in the case of a GPU, any loose components, be they fans or capacitors. I'd recommend at this stage, giving the GPU a good shake. For real. Oh, wow. Then you want to investigate the source of any of the noises that you hear. Now, for obvious reasons, it would be best to do this before handing over your money. Like if you were to meet up in person through Facebook Marketplace. But 
eBay buyer protection is really good these days, meaning that you can do it after the fact if you use a good marketplace. Just make sure to report any issues with the condition of the product oh. before the time limit runs out. I haven't personally purchased a GPU off of eBay. It's always been kind of weird for me with all the scams they were having last year with these photos they were selling. So eBay's not for me. And I know that they take like 15% tax or fees or something. It's ridiculous on eBay. Now, most of our cards arrived looking pretty good other than maybe needing a quick blast <laughs> of compressed air, which seems to support the theory that I've seen many times that miners actually are financially incentivized to take good care of their cards in hopes of maximizing their lifespans. Yes, you, dude, I'm telling you. I know so many gamers that are just pure gamers. Dude, they just put it in there. They don't clean that crap. Not saying that everybody's like that, but most people aren't doing, you know, really taking care of it, performing maintenance, changing the thermal pads. We're doing that all the time. We are constantly looking at the temperatures. We're always involved in it. And I don't know. I think for sure most miners, not all, but most miners are more concerned with the health and welfare of their graphics card because that's money. However, we also got a couple that were in questionable condition and that. How do I put this? Um, kind of smelled. It has kind of a smelled. vinegar smell to it. And then there's that MSI 5700 XT with the rattle to it, but that otherwise looks good. Of course, looks is only enough if you're planning to use your new GPUs as bookends. We want to know how they perform. The best way to determine if their performance has been affected by their time in the mines would be to measure these GPUs against identical brand new ones. That's very fair. Unfortunately, however, these are older cards and mint condition ones don't really exist. So the control lines that you see on our charts are going to be from lightly used GPUs from our stock that have spent most of their lives on the shelf. I respect it's worth it. noting here, by the way, that we expect some degree of variation between these cards. And the goal here is not to find the winner, but rather to see if our used GPUs are performing within spec. A quick and dirty way to check this I like that. is MSI Combustor. It takes just a couple of minutes, so it's the kind of thing that you could ask a seller to run before you hand over your money. If your GPU is significantly degraded, its clock speeds may fail to reach a normal level. And right out of the gate, it's obvious that some of our samples do have some problems. Ooh. The maximum and average clock speeds of our 3080s and our 3070s check out nicely Good. with some variants, but nothing that would indicate an issue. I like that he mentions this, the silicon lottery. That's what it comes down to. I get a 3070 and mine Ravencoin or, or mine Ethereum Classic or Flux. And, you know, let's pretend I get 60 mega hash for whatever algorithm. And then my friend gets 57. A lot of the times it's just the silicon lottery. It is what it is. So I like that he mentioned that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think a lot of people like to say, oh, it's 7% worse or something. No, sometimes it just happens. It's the silicon lottery. Meanwhile, our 3060 results show us our first obvious problematic GPU. Ooh, look at that. Eagle OC. Its average clocks are far lower than they should be. Yeah. We're going to put a pin in that for now, though, and move on to the 5700 I don't like series, Gigabyte at all. Where we see some very odd behavior as well. We want to keep a particularly close eye on the performance of this Sapphire Pulse card. Now, there are a few factors that determine the boost clock speed of a card. The main ones are the type of work the card is performing, the quality of the silicon, and the quality yep. of the cooler. Now, we've standardized our workload for now combustor and there's no way for us to affect silicon quality so the first troubleshooting step for any underperforming card is to take its temperature maybe it's got a wee little <laughs> fever this and is awesome. there it is the eagle oc 3060 oh. that we flagged before is thermally throttling with that's too easy to fix see a miner would have easily fixed that I don't know, maybe these were mined on, maybe they weren't, or they just didn't give a crap, or maybe even their ambient temperatures were better. But yeah, I wouldn't be going for that, man. 104, 108, oh no, that would never happen to me or any of the people that I know that mine. 108. With temps that far exceed any of our other 3060s. If we wanted to fix it, getting those temps under control would be a very good start. But this is a secondhand buyer's guide, not a GPU repair guide. So what you need to do is return that thing and let the seller figure it out. Yeah. Now let's turn our attention to the 5700 XTs. That Sapphire Pulse that had the lower clocks seems to have its thermals well in check. 
so throttling is unlikely. It also doesn't have clock speeds that are substantially limited, which seems to rule out the possibility that our seller was using a modified BIOS optimized for mining. Stuff like this is why combustor can only be considered a quick and dirty tool. So for this one, we are gonna need to go a little bit deeper and look at the amazing new underwear on LTTstore.com. Oh, that was so smooth. Holy crap, look at that dude's bold. What the, I, ne I did not see that um, one coming. Oh, and also <laughs> at some real world games. We settled on six games at three resolutions. And at risk of spoiling the conclusion a little bit here, the vast majority of our results were neck and neck with our control cards. Now the lab hasn't defined specific values yet for what counts as equal, but we figure for the purposes of this video, 58, 60 FPS, that's gonna be an imperceptible difference. Yeah, so who cares? as long as our mining GPUs managed to be 97% or higher than the control card, we're calling them in spec. Start it's really fair because you also have to consider these used GPUs are so much cheaper. I mean, sometimes they're anywhere from 25% to 50% cheaper than buying them new. Like he said, if I mean, if you're getting 97% or if you're getting 58 frames over 60, but you saved 30, 40%, I mean, Come on, I would do that any day of the week. That's that's a great point. And I think he's been very fair throughout this video so far. Starting with the 3080s, interestingly enough, once we averaged out our results, we noticed that we had a problem with our control GPU. While its average frame rates were fine, we found that its lows were lower than our mining GPUs. Oh, what are the chances, man? The gamers are crying right now. Send me your tears. <laughs> oh, the ones that weren't mined aren't we're actually performing worse than the mind. Oh God, that's great, man. Which is gonna that's manifest great. as stuttering and choppy animations during demanding sections of the game. Kind of funny that the lightly used card ended up being the borked one here. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. For now, the similarities between our mining cards are still enough for us to demonstrate that they at least are fine, or in the case of our EVGA model, a bit more than fine. I miss you already, EVGA. I do. I miss EVGA. 70s. Shout out to EVGA, man. We all love you. Come back somehow, please. We see every card performing as expected with little to no variance across our samples. And we got similar results with the 3060s, except for the Ventus 2X, which landed a little below our expectations. I have a couple of these. I think only two. I hate the Ventus. I don't know anybody who likes the MSI Ventus for mining. In general, just I think this is a terrible card. It, it does okay. I never, ever achieved the hash rate that I was supposed to. It would always be anywhere from 5 to 10% worse than everybody else. And a terrible GPU. Avoid this one for gaming. Avoid this one for anything. Thankfully, it looks like this one was pretty easy to explain and rectify. Our Ventus targets clock speeds that are about 3% lower than our reference card, and when lightly overclocked, it easily comes back in line. Now it is possible that the reason for this lower target clock speed is that the silicon is slightly degraded, but it's more likely that this particular card just wasn't as good from the start. I'm yep. gonna give it a pass. My As man. the 5700 XTs, our Sapphire Pulse ended up performing just fine in real world applications. What a relief. But wait! So, okay, we had two issues, right? Two graphics cards, and the Sapphire Pulse was one of them, and it still performed. Let's see what he says about the weight. You are screaming. We know the cores are fine. What about the VRAM, Linus? You need to test the VRAM! So we did. We used Ida64's GP <laughs> GPU benchmark to see if the modules have lost any performance or started throwing errors. And every single card looks good except the Eagle OC. Rest in peace, get your money back for this one. That GPU just sucks. I think most miners will tell you that as well. So yeah, totally expected. There's a reason you don't buy Gigabyte unless you really have to. Same with Zotac. You just don't buy these unless it's a GPU shortage and you have no other choice. There's certain brands, certain companies. You're just like, no. Maybe the Aurorus. Aurorus is good. Besides that, for me, Gigabyte, absolutely not. Always avoid. Uh, unless you can't for some reason. In that case, can we save the Eagle OC? Sadly, no. There are some things that can be overcome. A bad fan can be replaced. A bad Tim can be repaced. Hey, bad and Tim. if a mining <laughs> BIOS has been flashed, for example, the folks over at Tech Power Up have an amazing database of GPU yeah, BIOSes I use this that you can simply use to flash a stock one back onto your card. Bada bing, bada boom. Especially with the 5700 XT, I'm glad that he's using that as the example. 
everybody knows that um there, there's specific a, a lot of time amd or even the 3080 ti i want to say became a 3090 kind of with bios uh correct me if i'm wrong in the comment section below but yeah there's definitely specific cards and it's really cool how knowledgeable either he is or his staff is on mining and yeah for sure that, that's really cool that they knew about that about the 5700 but if you encounter artifacting which looks a little something like this or outright errors like we just saw the cold hard truth is that you probably cannot do anything which means then that there is some truth to the warnings you've seen about used cards whether it's intentional or not there are people out there trying to sell broken gpus yeah. as working ones but i still disagree with a lot of the points made by my fellow members of the media let's work through them together first the idea that you will suffer some kind of performance shortfall from the heavy use of mining was always silly and betrayed a fundamental misunderstanding of how these Thank products you. even work. Thank In you. In some ways, the heating and then cooling cycles, not to mention the higher clock speeds that are typical in gaming workloads, are more damaging to a GPU. So a heavily mined on GPU could fail, but then so could a lightly gamed on one. And until yep. either of them does, it will work as well as the other. God, I would love to see some more uh, crypto mining stuff from Linus. I know he's done a couple. I know there was something that happened with him, nice hash and little projects. But damn, I would love to see more crypto mining stuff from Linus, man. This is so factual. I love this. So basically, if you don't know, if you didn't understand that chart there, the GPU when you're mining is basically at a very, uh, or is always at the same temperature. So it doesn't really move too much. It doesn't get too hot. It doesn't get too cold. It kind of automatically happens. But when you're gaming, man, the graphics change, things render FPS, the voltage is shooting up and down. It's very bad for a graphics card. So thank you so much for that one, Linus. And now that you're armed with the tools that you need to weed out the bad from the good, <laughs> GPUs follow a very similar failure pattern to other electronics, meaning that the lemons usually die within weeks or months of manufacture, within their warranty period, and those non-lemons tend to live long and happy lives until they really, really don't. The next misconception that I've seen thrown around is that not purchasing used cards is somehow like, like sticking it to crypto miners. And while I fully support withholding demand until prices fall to acceptable levels, a stubborn refusal to buy one at all can only lead to two possible outcomes. If you are watching this video and you are that Timmy that they're showing right above me, I want you to say something in the comment se section. Say, I am that Timmy. I am that gamer. I am that guy. They probably aren't even watching the full video. They probably read the title and that was it. Oh man, shout out to the Timmys out there. Just salty. Either someone else will buy them or they will be scrapped as e-waste to avoid storing them. I mean, I get the anger. But by not purchasing a used GPU, you're not only depriving yourself of something that you want, you're potentially encouraging more harm to the environment. From well, yeah, I don't know about the environment thing. I'd have to, to research all that. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Think about this. All the people were complaining they couldn't get the graphics cards. It was impossible. You know, the miners took them all, which, uh, to be honest, is probably partially true for sure. But uh, now that you can have any GPU you want, pretty much Best Buy, you get Founder Edition, you get 30 Series, you get 40 Series. Besides, like, the 4090, you get anything you want. You're going to stick it to us, man. No, you, you just sound silly. And that's, that's a, another W for Linus here. From my point of view, every non-obsolete GPU that is not in a gaming PC is a brand new GPU that needs to be manufactured in its place. And if you think about it, buying new, are you really morally superior? Your purchase encourages large money-grubbing corporations to keep producing more GPUs out of our dwindling rare earth minerals. And these are the same big corporations that happily drop shipped literal tons of GPUs to large scale mining facilities, reaping record high profits during the pandemic. NVIDIA's quarterly revenue hits all time high of $7.1 billion. NVIDIA's revenue grows 50% year over year. Yeah. Record high profits during the pandemic. But like, f scalpers, right? Guys, NVIDIA and AMD were the biggest scalpers of all. Yep. Leaving us at the point then where the only moral thing to do is to simply not purchase a GPU at all. Yeah. But come on, what are we going to do? Not play Modern Warfare 2? So oh, I've been loving Modern Warfare 2. I love Call of Duty when I was a kid, when I was in high school, even, uh, you know, I'm 33 now, even in my younger 20s, then it fell off. This new Call of Duty is so good, though. Irrelevant, I'm sorry. Let me know if you play Call of Duty. The right thing to do would be to purchase a used GPU, then? I mean, only you can say. I've long grappled with my effect on increasing consumerism and how my very existence encourages some of the worst aspects of capitalism. 
but in my defense, I've also always been in. What is this play money? Is this Canadian? Is oh my god, is this what Canadian money looks like? Oh my god, it looks like Monopoly money, man. An outspoken advocate of keeping older hardware and service rather than buying things that you don't need. Maybe it's because I believe in the importance of the first two R's, you know, the reuse and reduce ones. Or maybe it's because I'm just a cheapskate. Maybe it's that I'm lucky enough to be able to afford to gamble on used products. But in the grand scheme of things, even if they do fail every once in a while, I don't see how you can afford not to buy used. I mean, considering that we weren't being particularly savvy with our purchases, we didn't haggle, we didn't bid on auctions, yep. we just bought whatever was available for asking price. Look how nice these graphics cards look. I'm just gonna hide myself. Look at this, man. Every one of these GPUs looks absolutely stunning, brand new. Look at the one in his hand. Wow, yeah, who wouldn't buy that, man? Spend an extra 30% on new one, you're crazy and then compared it to buying new at the time. And Even the boxes are nice. about 22%. That is not too shabby. Even if you remove the price of our broken GPU from that calculation, our savings are still 18.5% compared to if we bought this stuff new. I could get this for way cheaper. Way cheaper. I don't know what... He said eBay. Yeah, eBay is definitely not the place to go, man. Facebook Marketplace, Discords that are trusted, like Dreams, Escrow Service, those kind of things, man. You get this way cheaper in these prices. But I respect it. Again, we could have saved more money with patience and haggling. Yep. But as for whether it makes sense for you, it's going to depend on your risk tolerance. But like, come on, everything's a risk. Except buying a GPU with a transferable warranty, by the way. Like, my BBTA. Uh. And Aww. anyway, I'll tell you this much. As someone who's been hands-on with more computer hardware than most people will ever even lay eyes on, I've seen brand new stuff die for no reason, just as often as I've seen secondhand pieces of crap survive a brutal drop. Yep. Life is a crapshoot, and then you die. Just like I killed the original segue we had. To our sponsor, Zoho One. Do you Is this the third sponsor? Hey, you know what? You bought 19 GPUs, man. I'm good with it. Let me see if there's anything else. This was such a good video. Very important. I actually am interested in seeing how many people watch this video. 1.1 million people saw this video, and I guarantee you probably 50% of them are very upset. But it was the truth. Sometimes you just have to say what the truth is, and I, I very much respect what Linus did throughout this video. If you made it to this part of the video, please do put in hashtag water, hashtag water, and let me know, and I'll actually read your comment and take it more seriously. But hey, do please join us in the Discord. Check me out on Twitter and let me know that you watched this video. If you want to see more videos like this, reacting to gamers and other things, uh, yeah, just let me know and then maybe I'll do some more. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. DJ Minds signing out.